The title of today's webinar was Leveraging the Footprint CMDB. So what are we really trying to do that? You can see from the, from the graphic that the Configuration Management Database is really the core of everything we're doing with the rest of the Footprint's products. So incident and problem management, obviously, the, uh, the ability to then leverage that to uh, quickly improve, uh, satisfy issues, improve the resolution results. And part of doing that, whether you're an incident or change management, is to understand what are the configuration items, i.e. those assets in the configuration management database, you know, what are, what's there? What are we tracking? What kind of relationships does one attribute have to uh, one uh, configuration item have to another one? One of the big things that you will get out of this is that now when you are doing, again, an incident or a problem or whatever the record is, if you then elect to link the CI to that record, you'll then start to build a service history. So it's very easy to do reporting of how many outages have we had with their exchange server, uh, how many times has, uh, has one of their network devices been down, and give me the list of each one of the incidents that were actually associated with that outage. And you really start to get some really good metrics by being able to do that, and then be even being more proactive. How many issues have we had with Dell XYZ laptop configurations? Maybe looking at the number of incidents we had, had, maybe it's time to think about a tech refresh or something like that. So that's the real benefit of linking your configuration items to your various tickets that you are doing within your service desk. And then obviously having that type of information is going to let you be a lot more collaborative, especially in change management, right, being able to analyze what CIs are going to be impacted by the change, what's the risk assessment, what's the proper time of day to do those changes. It's having that CMDB that really uh, kind of allows you, uh, allows you to do that. And perhaps one of the biggest benefits by having a CMDB is it then puts you in a position to be able to offer out a service catalog. Uh, you know, that probably gets more uh, payback or return on investment as much as anything else you can do because now you can offer out to your user community a single portal where they could come and request whatever services you elect to offer out there. So obviously they would come and do incident-related services. My printer's got an issue. My PC's got this. I can't get to this. But it could also be other things within your organization. I want to report a facilities issue. I need to update my human resource uh, benefit statement. Uh, you know, again, whatever department you'd like to share in this space, they don't have to have a separate place that they go to request those services. It can all be done through a service catalog. And then the other advantage of that is with a service catalog, you're going to be able to ask a series of very simple questions when the user comes to that space and capture all the information that we need to then create all of the back-end processes, whether it's going to facilities or HR or security or IT. That's all kept transparent from the, from the, uh, from the user perspective. This is just an example of, uh, many of you probably know, in, in Footprint Service Core, this graphic up on the uh, upper left here is kind of what the landing page would be for the user community, where, as you could see, they could come in and request any types of services for HR, IT, maybe provisioning and entitlements. Uh, maybe they need to request project management issues, mobility issues. Again, these are all user-definable, but the point is it's a one-stop shop. And then once you select what it is that you're trying to offer out, the rules are, you know, you kind of play back. This is what we understand you're requesting. We associate any cost that may be there. We alert that whether any approvals are required. And as importantly, and perhaps most and one of the most important elements is, we, when they are requesting it, we establish what the normal turnaround time to deliver that service is, hopefully then avoiding a call 30 minutes after they put the request into the service desk, trying to find out what the status is when we've clearly delineated in the, in the service offering that it's an eight-hour turnaround or, or whatever it may be. So one-stop shop for both business and IT services certainly empowers the end user it's kind of the next step. Most people start out doing self-service. They can come in, bring up a blank form, uh, maybe put in what they want, and then this kind of takes it now to the next level where it's much more off automated. And again, trying to reduce the help and service desk calls so that you can keep your cost uh, under control as far as those folks go. 
So one of the things that we want to talk about is, well, if I'm leveraging the CMDB, how do I get all of those CIs into that, into that database? And then let's talk about the, the various ways. Obviously, there's manual creation, the least desirable way to do that. Uh, we can import items from a spreadsheet if you've got them. We can import items from uh, other databases. So if you're using some third-party type discovery tool that's got a database under it like SCCM, we can leverage that, bring those items in to populate our CMDB. We can obviously leverage the BMC Footprints Asset Core tool, which, as many of you know, is the companion module to Footprint Service Core, where this help desk and CMDB is. It does a wonderful job of going out and doing the discovery, understanding what's installed on the devices. But even if you had that, you would still then want to integrate that into your CMDB because that's where you're going to establish the relationships and start tracking, start building a service history of what's having to those CIs. So both are important to have in a, uh, in a mature environment like that. Then the other thing that you can do if you have some high volumes of assets that move around, whether it be receiving or just moving from one location to another location, is RightStar has developed a product we call ScanStar. It's kind of a uh, uh, supersedes a, a product that we used to have for the Service Desk Express called Magic Wand. And it, as the, the, the screen is depicting there, it gives you a very accurate way using, you know, very sophisticated barcode scanners to, you know, keep your CMDB up to date, regardless of whether it's just IT equipment or anything else that you can scan, be it furniture, be it uh, uh, building materials, be it uh, we've had some people even scanning, you know, uniforms and radio devices and that type of thing. So it makes for a very efficient way any of you who have ever worked with trying to uh, input manually serial number or asset tags know how frustrating it can be to key in, you know, 8 to 12 digit alphanumeric digits and most of us will, you know, transpose at least one out of 10 of those and then we spend a lot of time doing the uh, doing the corrections. So the whole point is this is a great way to not only initially load some information into your footprints database, but a way to keep it uh, accurate and up-to-date. And I'm going to actually show you a little bit of that today because I think it is a legitimate component of the footprint CMDB. The, uh, the three modules we have to keep that CMDB current within the ScanStar product, the first one is receiving where, you know, the person on the receiving dock gets in a shipment of PCs or whatever it is. They can very accurately just go down the line scanning the serial number or asset tag or whatever your policy is there to very quickly have that CI then created in the Footprints database. And we can even capture these common properties. Like if I'm getting ready to receive in 25 Dell laptops, they all have the same manufacturer. They probably all have the same uh, warranty date. Most people are kind of consistent on how they do that. We're going to initially receive them into our warehouse. So those common types of things can be there, but we'll uniquely scan either an asset number or a asset tag or a serial number or both, depending on, again, your processes. But then it creates the record within the, uh, within the CMDB. And then, of course, your, your, what I call your move ad changes, right? Your tracking of the assets. I've got a, I'm going to, got a new employee starting. I'm going to take one of those Dell laptops we just received. I'm going to take it out of the warehouse and assign it to that person in this building at this cube location. And by using the scanner again, it's very accurate which asset that I actually grab because I'm going to scan that serial number. And again, it creates the entries automatically in the footprints, uh, CMDB. Likewise, one of the things a lot of our customers struggle with, of course, is doing that physical inventory at the end of the year or the quarter or ever, how often you have to do it, to be able to account for all of your, all of your assets. So the, the logic behind this module is your scanner is synchronized with your footprints database as it relates to the CI information that you want to track. And so the people go out with the scanners. They know what uh, footprint service scores CMDB thinks. They merely then walk around from building to room to asset. They scan it. It pops up on the screen. This should be in building 26, uh, you know, Dick Stark's uh, office, and this is the serial number, and boom, if that's right, you just go to your next device. But it will write a record in the service history of that CMDB for that item that we verified it was 
where it was supposed to be on a given date. And as the screen would suggest here, if in doing that I come across the record I didn't know about, somehow somebody got a new asset into our locations and we didn't know about it, we can correct it right there on the spot, create that CI record within the footprint CMDB and, and kind of go on from there. So it's a, it's a very great way of uh, handling that. Uh, we can get you all of this detail for any of those of you who may be interested, but it uses you know Motorola Intermec and uh, Janum scanners to be able to uh, to uh, to do that. So we're going to go into the actual demonstration of the footprints leveraging the CMDB, and you know we we will take your questions at the end, and of course you can always. Uh, contact us here at rightstar.com at our website or you know email sales at rightstar.com or the phone number and I think most of you probably uh, probably have that information. So I'm going to uh, pop over here. I'm uh, logged in to the uh, Footprint Service Core, which is where the CMDB lives. Now, I mean, as a staff member, obviously, I think many of you have probably seen this type of information before. But we talk about leveraging it. So let's first off just talk about how you would leverage it in just a plain incident management system, and then we'll ultimately go up and look at the service catalog that I referenced in the slides and ultimately go into the CMDB and look at some information there. So let's say that I wanted to go in, you know, the phone rings, I'm a staff member, I want to create a new incident. And, you know, someone comes in and they're basically saying, uh, you know, I've got an email issue today is what my issue is. And, of course, I identify uh, who my user is that's got the issue. Uh, typical service desk stuff, pretty straightforward here. So it's, uh, you know, this particular person that's uh, calling in saying he's got an email problem. Obviously, as with most service desk systems, I could change the priority or, you know, escalate to a different group. I'm then going to record uh, the uh, the details of uh, of no access here to the uh, to the email system. But one of the things that I can do if I'm following these mature processes here is I would want to link things. Now I've already got this individual's desktop that's in here, but because you know half the time that's what they're calling about are their own devices. But if today they're really calling in about uh, email. It could be a problem with their desktop, but we want to tie it to that service. So I could just very easily go in and say I want to uh, look up one of my configuration items, and I, if I know the name, I can do it, or I could just look up uh, something that starts with like email, and I find that I do have a configuration item in my CMDB called email, and I'm going to link that to this. So a couple of mouse clicks I was able to do that, Again, the advantage for you is you're going to start to build up then those reporting metrics. You're going to start to build up those service histories of how many email tickets have, how many uh, email issues have we had, and here are the list of incidents where those emails were actually uh, uh, documented within that. So that's basically the way you leverage it. Obviously, if you wanted to go drill into one of these, you could do it right from here. I'm going to go to the CMDB at a little later point in time and, and kind of show you what that uh, what that looks like and what those relationships that we uh, have are. So, you know, there's my uh, new issue that came in that we did on email where we do have it linked to a uh, to a configuration item. Now, we also talked about the advantage of having the CMDB is coming to this one-stop shop where I might want to be requesting services. And it could be something as simple as, I need one of these things. That's a pretty simple one to do. But it could be, obviously, one of those that's very complex. Uh, I'm a manager, and I have a new hire starting Monday, and there are 12 things that need to happen for that individual to be productive when they get there. I can do all of that request here at this one location, but then I will generate all of the requests, including getting a PC out of inventory and assigning to that new employee. So again, I'm hitting my CMDB at that standpoint. We'll just go in and kind of uh, do a, a more simplistic one here. Well, what type of IT services do you need access to systems? You got a problem with your desktop? You got a problem with your phone or your tablet? Or I'm looking for a uh, you know business application? Well, in my environment, I've created the following service catalog templates under business applications. One to request Adobe Reader, one to request Adobe Professional, one to get uh, add me to the email exchange, and another one to come to whatever our ERP system might be. 